Oh, I'm not. <laughs> lazy guy, lazy everything. I'm lazy lesbian, we know this. <laughs> and welcome to Book Club. <laughs> Sorry. Right, hi. <laughs> hi everyone and welcome to Book Club. I'm Simon Savage. And I'm Melanie Sides. And today we are filming in Hoxton Books yeah. because one, we're always going to try and film in bookshops forevermore. Yes. Two, it is Independent Bookshop Week and we are the Independent Bookshop Week official book club yeah. and we have been getting all of you to read Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart with us which is up for the Independent Bookshop Week Awards. I think I've managed it. You've done it, well done, all the facts. I'm so glad you do that bit. We should just say there might be some drilling works that you can hear behind us every so often. Yeah. So it's not what me or Melanie had for breakfast. No, it does sound very like that though. <laughs> That, okay. That was a tiny one. And another. <laughs> anyway. We need to get over it. We're <laughs> asking our lovely viewers to get over it. And we can't. We can't. Anyway, so, Shuggy Bane is the tale of a young boy called Shuggy and his mother, Agnes, who, when we meet, originally we actually meet him after his mother has died. It's not a spoiler to give that away. And then we go back and find out her life story and their story together. So... <laughs> We've got to be so tired. We've got to get over it. We really do, because otherwise it's going to be really long. We do. <laughs> <laughs> so, Melody, first question, as always. Yes. What did you think of it? How did you get on with it? Because you picked this one. Yeah. Out of a selection of shortlisted books. This, this type of novel is, is right up my street about people in real situations. It's heavy, but it's beautifully written. It's so poetic. Some of the sentences, are, again, are things you want to highlight and reread over and over. Um, his descriptions of, of the poverty, his descriptions of people that are really struggling are just unbelievably beautiful. And I, yeah, I cried through some of it. There was one moment that, one chapter, I actually messaged you and said, chapter 17, oh my God. That literally was the voice note. Yeah, um, it, it felt like I was watching a movie or that I was there witnessing it. It's excellent, this novel. I think it's sort of an epic, I feel. I think both in terms of its scope, we should say it's set in, Glasgow in Scotland during the Thatcher years, predominantly the sort of early 80s onwards, and then we get to 1992, or well, we go from 92 back to the 80s, then to 1992. Um, and I think the way that this looks at family, the way that it looks at alcoholism and addiction, because Agnes is an alcoholic. Chronic. Oh. Uh, alcoholic. And it's, it's, so hauntingly done, mm. but also the writing is so stunning. How did you find the writing about Agnes? And, and what did you make of Agnes? Because I really think she's the heart of this book. Even though it's called Shuggy Bane and yeah. we we'll see it through his eyes, I feel like she is the focus. Yeah, well it's about his, it's about her, how she lives a life and how she parents or not parents as the case may be and his love for her. So she is, she is the main drawer of the entire thing. Um, to say I liked her, I don't know. I feel, she's a wounded, traumatised person. And a lot of the people in the book are traumatised people. And, and how they act out because of trauma. And so there's a great deal of empathy for that. And alcoholism is very interesting a subject to me i mean i've been sober four years now and i wasn't a chronic alcoholic but i definitely self-medicated with alcohol for quite some time on and off for years so and i've been around it as a child as well so for me it really took me, took me back but also the backdrop of the 80s and the thatcher years i'm i'm from a little lancashire town where during those years, we were hit by it. You know, my father was on short time. My parents have got three daughters. I remember hard times then. We were never poverty line, but we, mum and dad had to become quite clever about how they made food and how they spread the food out and, and all the rest of it. So as a political backdrop, I res it resonated with me because I lived it not, it, it, like I say, not on um, the breadline. 
but try to avoid being on the bread yes. line. Um, so it, it moved me and touched me and I related and it's just magnificent, really. And, and the thing is with me is I, I want to be faced with things like that. I don't avoid things that I recognise. I want to read it. Yeah, we've talked about this before, haven't we, where we really like these sort of books and actually we have to sort of make an effort to make sure there's some happier, lighter moments. roots yeah. in, in book club because yeah. otherwise it would be quite um, a lot of hard. But having said that, can I just say that the human spirit is always, you know, so obviously some people get broken, some people it finishes them off, but for example the son, Shuggy, he goes on and he, do, I mean the the writer, it's not autobiographical, but it is. It is based, I think. It's on, based on his experiences yeah. with an alcoholic mother. And even if you look at a little bit of, of what Douglas has done with his life, you know, all those experiences making who he is today, and he's a, he's a bloody amazing writer for one. Yeah, what resonates with this for me is that it's about going through hard times and it's about some really, really dark times that somebody goes through, but they survive it. And it's how they carry on and how that makes you who you are. There were several levels on this book that really kind of uh, linked in with me. One was that we were very much, we went on the breadline, but we were avoiding it. I remember my mum took me to university with her and I remember at some point people were shocked when we didn't have milk for cereal. I remember having water on my Frosties. Yeah. How we had Frosties and we didn't have milk, I don't quite <laughs> know. A son being brought up by their mother on their own, that really, really, really resonated mm -hmm. with me. Um, my mum wasn't an alcoholic, but like that, that relationship, although sometimes, and I would like to talk about that relationship a little bit more in a bit, um, but also the um, drink. So I used to have a real issue with drink. I didn't know when to stop drinking. That was my problem. I could always do like, I'll have one, and then as soon as I was on two, I was on eight. Yeah, same. Like it wasn't. Same. And, and same. I've never got quite as bad as I can, but there was so much drinking. Right I remember being part of awkward situations. I remember, and it's quite confronting to read that. I found. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's I, I totally agree with that. There were there were moments where I sometimes think back in some of the situations I found myself, and really, it's by the grace of God that I'm still here because I put myself in some vulnerable situations um, when I wasn't in, you know, fully compass medicine, and it really is by the grace of God go I. And I'm reading it, and she's getting in cabs with cab drivers and driving up to the slag heaps and. I um, mean, it's just, she's primed for abuse. She's literally sitting up for abuse. Yeah. And, um, and because she's attractive and because she's strong and because she's different to the other women and um, her sexuality and her attractiveness, she, she really does use. Um, but it's also all these people that come in and just keep helping her top up. Yeah. Keeping her top up to get what they need from her. Certain moments that resonate with me because I I used to have nights where I would not remember how I got home. Yeah, and, and chapter seventeen, which is one that you messaged me about, where something awful happens to her, that is so. Oh, like well, for me, it's the morning after what's happened. Yeah. Right. That waking up with the, the, you know, and we've all, well, maybe we've not all been there, but a lot of them have been there where you open one eye and you just think, like, okay, what happened? Because blackouts do happen. Yeah. And you piece it together. And sometimes you piece it together in a way that you're comfortable with, but you actually don't know. No. And then to sit and to be almost rebooting yourself with more liquor, I've never done that, I have to say. I just deal with a hangover with fry ups and loads of milk. Yeah, I never did that, but I did used to do this awful thing where I would go out and get so drunk, I would be sick and then carry on going. Yeah, I've done that too. It's just, yeah, I've and done that when too. reading this, I was like, Agnes, no, stop, but I never felt like that with myself. No. No, because, because what happens when you're drinking is because you do not care for yourself. You have no self-respect, you have no self-love. You are literally numbing pain. I mean, definitely mine was medicinal because I'm super sensitive. I hear, hear everything, you know me now. I hear everything, I see everything. I'm, I'm literally like a sponge and sometimes it's just quite a noise. And I don't know where I'm going with that. I've completely forgot where I'm going with it, but anyway. But it, I think it, but that, that's where it's so fascinating with Agnes because 
it's a mixture of everything that's making her drink. And I thought actually Dr. Stewart did a really good job there in kind of looking at all the different ways you can end up drinking. Be it, like you said, where other people are topping you up because they want something we... Well, when the woman, the, the neighbour comes round, doesn't she? And she's like, I won't stay long, but she gets so sozzled. They run out, they get some other guy, which she entices into the house with the, pretend, with the potential that he might get to fuck her. Sorry, but that's kind of what she's doing to bring the booze over you and you might get a kiss and a feel up. And sort of almost selling her down yeah. Swanee for another drink and another packet of fags. And, oh my God, it just... It, oh, got that chapter. The bit that got to me as well was it's how Shuggy stays with her through this, oh, no. but her other children don't. No. I found that very powerful. Mm. I don't know whether this is me projecting because Shuggy is a queer character, but I think because he's at odds with the world, he understands more her yeah. at odds with the world. Even though he doesn't understand it, there's yeah. something in it that mm. he connects with. And I thought that was beautifully, beautifully done. I did think sometimes their relationship was making me feel deeply uncomfortable because it was very close. Yeah. Like, and that I kind of didn't know how I felt about. Um, well, it's codependency, um, next level codependency, isn't it? He's vulnerable. She's vulnerable. He's having to negotiate all sorts of weird, wonderful scenarios because she's out of it. Um, so it's uncomfortable because that's what happens. Yeah. Oh my God, it's such an amazing book. It is, it's pretty, and there, there is so much in it. I loved the way that Douglas Stewart looks at women's relationship with other women, both in the good ways and both in bad. There's a brilliant bra scene very early on. Again, the set piece around women and how he creates these characters so quickly through that. I've got very handy to know what's going <laughs> Go on. Go for it, because there's no table, so you're just like... <laughs> I'm like that, but they free and wild. Go for it, yay! It's Pride Month. <laughs> I can be who I want to be. You anyway, can, you can. just like Shuggy, which also I want to come back to actually. It's a very bleak book, but there are some moments of utter comedy. Yeah. Is it Colette or Colleen, who's the woman, when they move house to kind of almost Saying they've moved up in the world is like not really saying much because it's gone from one shithole to another yeah. pretty horrific scenario. And all the women are into like, oh, you lardy doll, and they're all going to it. And then there's just this whole thing about, we'll never like each other. But yeah, they sort of love not liking each other. Yeah, yeah. I love the relationships with women in the book. What did you think about Well, I, I didn't love them because they weren't... Um... See, I'm a, I'm a woman's woman. Maybe and I mean for the comedy effect. I like yeah, no, the there's, comedy I mean, the, there's one bit where Agnes goes over to her neighbour and her neighbour's having a right go at her and she, right at the end of the argument, she reveals that she slept with her husband. That's and what it, I mean. Yeah, and the way moments. in which she says it, I laughed out loud at that. Because it was like, yeah, let, let her go on with herself. Let her go on with herself. I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. Now you take this bitch. <laughs> And I was like, go on, girl. Because she, I do root for Agnes. Oh, God, totally. I totally root for her the whole time. When she cleans up her act and, and the house starts getting better and she's a bit more on top of the finances and everybody's breathing, and I, you, I'm, I'm waiting for the horror. I'm waiting for this horror. And for the, the boyfriend comes back, doesn't he, and takes her out for dinner. Eugene. And just, Eugene, and he wants her to have another drink, and it's just... I found... Oh. That added to it because we as the reader get to see Agnes at her most Agnes and without everything and the clarity, almost the clarity of Agnes yes, actually, exactly. I guess is what it is. Yeah. Um, and that makes what happens all the more harrowing. Yes, when, it was harrowing. When, spoilers, but you've read it if you're here or you're thinking of it. And actually, you know what I really, really found interesting? People who haven't read the books watch our videos and then go read them. I love oh, that. Nice. We don't yeah. put them off then. No, not at all. We're doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but um, yeah. spoiler, basically, she she does go down here again. But I think that added to it for me. Um, I did find that segment a little bit with Eugene, possibly a bit over long. I could have done that, that a bit shorter. I wanted it a bit more condensed. It felt right. like it went on. And actually, and this is me being very picky. Okay. Very picky because I do absolutely love this book. And there was a slight unevenness to the way the book went on with chapter lengths and stuff. But it's just something that I look at. Okay. Because I over read things for judging and stuff and it doesn't quite wash away from that. And I'll tell you why I probably don't notice things like that because how I read, especially of late, is always in bed and it's always in 15, 20 minute chunks because I'm so tired by the end of the day, I'm literally 
So I'm not even aware of chapters because I'm not planning through two, three, four chapters. I'm actually, I'm reading it at the moment. This is how I have to read the moment because I'm so busy with the magazine that I'm having to just get in bed and that is my time to do it. And then it makes me sleepy. Yeah. So um, I'm just getting it in little pieces every every night. So I, I, I've not noticed the, um, what's the word? The rhythm of, of yeah. the narrative. That was the word that I should have said. That was yes. the term that I should have used. <laughs> Thank you, Luke. The rhythm of the narrative. <laughs> <laughs> I um, want to ask you about the men in the book mm. because we have Big Shug, who yes. is Shuggy's dad, mm. who is... Oh, that reminds me of one of the best scenes in it. So he calls back Big Shug and she's sober and got her shit together. And she lets him look at every room. She lets him see how well she's doing. And he's desperately thinking, I'm going to get back in with her. And, get, and she, she just says, you've, got, you've seen everything now, now, fuck off. Yeah. And it was like, bravo, yeah. bravo. And because he is just a monster. Oh, he's awful. There's that one scene because he's a taxi driver. Mm -hmm. And actually, taxi drivers is a big thing throughout the yeah, book. Yeah, really the book. And the hackney, they call it a hackney, don't yeah. they? Yeah. There was one scene where, and I think this is another thing that Douglas Stewart does really, really well, is that he's gets a call that he thinks is having he's like, oh God, I'm actually going to pick her up, she's drunk again. And it's not, it's a nurse at a hospital who's he's basically been shagging. And um, he lets her in the back of the car, and he's like, oh, I've got no time for And then he's that thing where he's like, oh, get your knickers off, I've got five minutes, come on. And I was like, one, I giggled, because I was just like, this is so outrageous. But then I was like, that's so gross. And I think there are a few times in this book where Douglas Stewart takes a little point of humour and then spins you to think that isn't funny. like. It could be comic, but it, think about what you're just reading. Yeah. That's a really clever thing for an author to do. Right, okay. Did you find that? Well, I didn't think about it in terms of cleverness at all. I, I, di I didn't. I, I mean, I just remember thinking how stark some of the scenarios were, but they happen. Yeah. There are men like that. They but, are men like that all over but the But that's world. what I think is also deeply unsettling about this book, is the fact this is the 80s, not a lot's changed. Like. And again, that's a haunting thing about the book. And I did wonder why he chose to, to put it in that time, but I wonder if that's because his recollection or whether... How old is he? He is. He's our, I was going to say our age, but my age. Do you think he... Do you think, yeah. I think he might be in his mid-40s. Oh, right, okay. Maybe. I don't know. How old are you, Douglas, if you're watching this? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, Douglas. What did you think about Eugene? Oh, so so he he was toxic, but shroud, but we hid it, he hid it better. Than Big Shug for me. Do you know what it reminded me of? My Dark Vanessa. Right. Where you get, do you remember you have the awful. Yeah, and, and then the second guy. Another one, and it's yeah. like, oh, should I shouldn't, I should yes. I should. And Eugene, Same. I felt very like, should I like him, should yeah. I not like well, him? Well, at first I thought he was great. I thought, savior, 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 he loves her, he cares for it, he sees her, la 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 la. When it went away for me is when he was pushing her to drink. Yeah. Any man that pushes a woman who is an alcoholic, a proven alcoholic, to drink is not a good man. No. And so for me, that was it. End of story, end of the line with that guy. Yeah. Um, so no, he, yes, exactly. He was, he was as bad as Big Shug. Yeah. He just hit it better. He just hit it better. And I think that was a really, I think they did that really well. We are all traumatized. This book is, is all about it's, it's all like, about it's generational it, trauma. Exactly, that's and what I'm saying. Almost the inherited trauma. trauma by proxy. No, yeah. it is inherited trauma, absolutely. Yeah. If we start having a bit of empathy for people like that and start understanding where their wounding comes from and why they act out the way that they do, then we might become a healthier world. Um, God, I hope so. I think it also shows the power of his writing again in the fact that these characters felt so real. Do you know when a book kind of gets you so much that you feel like you've lived and breathed it? Which you haven't, but you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm telling you, chapter 17, for me, I was in that room. I was in that living room. I, I, when, I, when I ended it, I was like, yeah. like trying to take some air. Because really, it was claustrophobic, that's, that scene. And it's really rare that we will, we, we message each other about all sorts of things, but weirdly, we never talk about the book. We purposely don't until we meet. We'll talk about anything else. Yeah, anything, exactly. Anything no, we'll never say it. But it was, it was that thing of you did message and it was like, oh. yeah, yeah, it, well, I had to tell you. Yeah. I mean, it was, yeah, it was, in, it was in shorthand, but I had to tell you that, my God, yeah. that's, that's, that's the one. Yeah. Um, one thing, as it is Pride Month, one thing I want to talk about was Shuggy Bane's sexuality is yeah. kind of, it's a really, I think again, brilliantly drawn example where 
Shuggy likes dolls, he likes, basically he's more feminine and doesn't really fit in. And I don't think I've read a book that looks at that as well as this does and how it's not just the adults that try and make you switch, but also the kids around you and how mean kids can be. And I'd forgotten that from going through that myself. But also um, there's this thing about how you have to like, he purposely tries to remember football scores. He has no interest in football, but it's just so that he can be more masculine. I found that painful. But it's awful. It's so sad to read all of those things. The constant, um, yeah, everybody telling him, don't be like that, don't do that, keep that to yourself. I mean, just for a child to have to, just constantly, um, what's the word? Just reposition themselves. It's almost like you have to be a chameleon. You kind of have to keep shifting what but not even a, not even in a in a it's so it must be so shocking every time to to hear I think I think it's even I mean what I find really really shocking is even now in the queer community there is a thing around people being masculine or feminine right. in the community and people get attacked for it just like there is are you thin are you muscly are you a bit of a so bear So <laughs> <laughs> I was deeply upset that that he would have to w was not allowed to be his authentic self can't even imagine how that must be growing up not being able to be your authentic self mm -hmm. anywhere your nearest your dearest people on the street people at school your teachers yeah the abuse he got in class i mean it's amazing he survived it forget the mother and all of her stuff how he he just kept himself intact and still was able to love Still able to love her, still able to take care of her, still see the good in her. Because because you would think you would just end up being a really bitter and twisted person, right? Yeah, I don't think we've moved on as much as we think we have in that regard either. Do you know what I mean? We haven't in terms of how men treat women from this era or how it is to be queer growing up. I don't think things have changed that much either way. No, I don't, I don't think they have. Shall we go to viewers questions? Yes. Yes, let's. As long as they're good ones. <laughs> no, um, I'm, being, I'm so, being naughty, sorry. Madden Sad Club so would like to know how much did we cry at the end? I didn't actually cry at the end. I cried at the penultimate chapter. Yeah, but I didn't cry at the end, but I cried, yeah, I cried the same, probably the same place as you, yeah. I found that deeply, deeply moving. Yes. Um, Sophie Woodward, 16. Agnes, do you think she's a likeable or endearing character? I think she's endearing. I, I was, I, I felt for her. I empathised with her in certain ways. Sympathised with her. What about you? I, I like the potential that she had. I didn't dislike her. She's a wounded individual. I only had empathy for her, and I suspect if she'd have um, not um, been an addict and not had trauma, that she would have been a pretty spectacular person. Yeah. Yeah. So this book I've... is very much about her potential. Yeah, and that's quite haunting, I think as well. Yeah, it's, um, it's a tragedy. It is a tragedy. It's a mm. tragic story. Edward O underscore ninety five asks as a gay novel, how did you think it worked? And it's interesting because I don't see it as a gay novel, even though it has a queer character coming of age and coming to terms with sexuality. Isn't yeah, that weird? Yeah, I know, and I was the same. I was like, oh gosh, yes, of course, that was very much in the vein of it. Um, but for me, it was about um, alcoholism. Yeah. Um, so I didn't tap into that. I mean, I, I knew it was there. Um, but it doesn't seem to me... But me, it's not a gay like, novel, yeah, it's, it's about like a, a mother queer. and son relationship. What is a gay novel? Because we had this conversation last month with Graham Norton's book. Yeah. We need to get to the bottom. Yeah. No pun intended. <laughs> I knew you were going to laugh. We need to get to the bottom of we what need... is a gay novel. I'm, yeah, what is a gay novel? Don't know. Leave your uh, thoughts in the comments below, please. What is a gay novel? Yes. And along with an aubergine emoji. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> or a peach. A few people asked this question about the title. Should it have been called Agnes Bane instead of Sugar Bane? What do you think? I think because it's from Shuggy's perspective and it's his experience of her, then it's got the right title. Yeah, I think so as well. Yeah. I think so as well. I did a Minara about it for a little bit mm. because it is, 
it's so much about their story. Mm -hmm. You can record it, it should be an Agnes Ripper June, really. No, but it's his, it's his take on the scenario, so it's de for me it's the right title. Ben the Fan, who I adore, he's got a fabulous YouTube channel, I'll link it down below. Um, is it 100 pages too long or does it suit its length? <laughs> I think for me it's that rhythm. In the middle, the rhythm went a bit... What's the word I want to use? I, I think it needed a tighter condensers in the middle a bit. Right. And I, I can't comment because I, I, I read it in, in bite-sized chunks. So I don't remember the, I don't know. I, did, I didn't feel that, that anything was too long. I, I, did, I, I loved it. I mean, I'm literally- Oh, I loved it as well. I, can't, I can't really fault this book. It's Faye Wainwright who asked about our immediate impressions after reading the first chapters. For me, I just wanted to hug it. And, and do you know, I don't remember, so I can't answer that. I, I, I don't remember how I felt after the first few chapters. I, I, I don't remember. I think I was just straight in. I think it was that scene about the women in the bakery. I was straight in, yeah. but I don't remember how I feel like after I read the first few chapters. I don't remember that feeling, but I was straight into the novel. She doesn't remember. I don't remember. I don't know if she's told you, but she doesn't uh, remember. Yeah. Can we all move on? Yeah, just move on. <laughs> <laughs> um, the bookish mother, who I also know as Claire Rove, uh, do you think the ending is uplifting? And I do. I yes. think that scene oh, yes. with Shuggy and Leanne, who I loved Leanne when she came onto the scene. Oh, yeah, she's, she's amazing. Yeah, she was um, brilliant. I think, yeah, I think there is hope at the end. Yeah, well, there is hope at the end. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a wonderful way of doing it because it still was in the vein of, of how crass and coarse the life was, um, but it was all going to be okay. Yeah. And it was, it was a lovely ending. Mr. Ray Wigsworth, who I also know, and is lovely, was Glasgow that brutal? I wasn't there! <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't there either. But from what I've read of other books around it, I would recommend Damien Barr's memoir, Maggie and Me, which is set exactly the same time About as Margaret his Thatcher. memoir. Yeah, She's in, got lots in of answers for that one, though. She has. Growing up queer in Scotland at that time, Damn. and it's very similar. Like, oh. is it not as in similar to the same book, just to clarify, but as in yeah. The political backdrop. Yeah. Oh, I love this question from Oliver underscore reads underscore, who I don't know. Um, I love the lack of colour in the book. Grey, black, it reflected the mood. Yes. And I didn't notice that until I read that comment earlier, because it's true. It's all very shades of grey, which is sort of kind of what the book's about. Yeah, I didn't feel that at all. Interesting. I didn't feel that at all because, you know, even... I just didn't. I just didn't, so I think it's interesting that he did, but um, you know, the way she was de described, her personality was vibrant. It might have been toxic and poisoned, but she was a vibrant character. And even her clothes, that purple coat, True. there were pops of colour all the way through it that he, you know, whether it be a slash of red lipstick or a, um, her... So no, I, I don't think so. I guess she was the colour. She she was the colour, yeah. Yeah, she was the colour in the book. Yeah, she was. Katie Listogram. Did we love, as she loved, how the book manages to capture love and humour despite the grim sadness of addiction, poverty and abuse? Um, yes, and I suspect that is um, innate for that community, as it is for... Liverpoolians and Northerners and East London people. There is humour is a is a survival mechanism, isn't it? Um, and and it's very specific to certain areas. And the last question from um, the lovely Carrie of Tea Books and Breathe: Mother son relationship. And this is a spoiler, so if, if you want to don't want to know this, skip until we start waving some new books about because we're going to tell you about the next four books that you're going to be reading with the next four months. And a change to the book club name. Yes. What a teaser for all of three minutes. <laughs> um, Carrie asks, mother son relationship, did he let her die to ultimately save herself or himself? Yeah, I, I, I suspect for her. I think I'm not going to be sitting on the fence getting chafing um, splinters. What are you going to say? I think both. Oh, right, okay. I, I do think, I think it was for her in the fact that she clearly was so unhappy and what had happened before she died had happened. But I also think for him because um, when you're around someone who is, is dying- Who wants to die yes. as well. Very much like, she Or who is to ready die. to, yeah. yeah. Um, there is that weird thing where they're ready and you sort of want them to because you know it's right for them, but you also know as the 
support that afterwards it will be better for you yeah i i don't i don't know i think that he was just he'd, he'd been around it you know alcoholics are slowly killing themselves aren't mm. they she's had loads of suicide attempts it really was like she was close to the rattle and he probably just let it go for her I, but i hear you I hear you. I've never been in that situation, so I, I, I can't imagine like what naturally a human, a well-adjusted human being or, or somebody that's been traumatised would would go, do you know, actually, I kind of like wanted to go this over the door so I can be free. I can't imagine myself ever feeling like that, but I've never been in that situation. I mean, I'm going from my experience and, and my gran, who was yeah. so ready because she was ill, not, not because of anything like that, but she was so ready to go yeah. that when and we were with her, telling her that it was time for her to go, that there was part of us that, as it went on and on, I just remember thinking, I want you to go for you, but I need you to go for me, because I need to deal with my grief that's coming, but also because... Yeah, that's interesting, yeah. I hear you, I hear yeah. you. Well, on that note, <laughs> what no, a note to end it We can finish with that right, okay, bye. <laughs> but we loved it, didn't we? We absolutely loved this book. I thought it was a masterpiece. And also I should say, this is my second time reading it. Thank you, Douglas, for that book. Thank you very much. So, next choices. Yes. And a bit of a change in title, so we've just got both books. Book Club is changing. It is changing. Not in the fact that it's changing, in the fact that we'll still be doing a book club together in bookshops, because that's the way we want to do it. Absolutely. But we've got a new name. Yeah. It is The Frank Book Club because now Simon and myself are going to be part of my magazine, Frank. My magazine, Frank, is turning into a website and we will be living on our website. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's going to be the Frank Book Club from now on. Yeah, and you'll yeah. be able to find it on both the website and my site. And you, exactly. It'll, yeah. But also, we thought it was apt because as we've gone on with this book club, one of the things I think you'll notice is that we're both very frank. Yeah. How we feel about well, I just them. don't see the point of doing a book club if you're not. No. Otherwise, it's just fluff and I'm not interested in no. fluff. Exactly. So, if there's certain things we don't like, like crowbarring is one of our <laughs> pet thieves, or tepid, that was a hashtag don't that I enjoyed. Tepidry. No, um, thank you. Or if I find the rhythm of the narrative is just not right for me, <laughs> we will tell you. And if it is completely polar opposite, we'll tell each other. Yes. So, that's the point. So, next month we are going to be reading because we're letting you know our summer selection for the Frank Book Club, Grace Dent's Hungry, which is her memoir. Grace is Northern. We're Northern, if you haven't noticed. It's all about her love of food. I love food. So do I. Exactly. So uh -huh. I think this is going to be a delicious treat. Yeah, I can't See wait. I, I guess it's her sort of toast, isn't it? Yeah. It's her version I of toast. Toast is a wonderful book. It's, it's not dissimilar to sugar toast in some ways, a childhood uh, in a traumatised yeah. uh, relationship with parents. It's kind of, like it, it's got that vibe. Did you see the um, theatre adaptation? Yes. Where they gave you food and everything. Yeah, oh no, God, no, It was no, amazing. No. Anyway, random. Uh, then, in August, we'll be reading... We're reading this one by Dara McNulty, Diary of a Young Naturalist. He's 16 and he's won so many awards for this sort of memoir. I'm so excited about it. I mean, that alone is enough to pick up and read it yeah. for me. So I'm yeah. really looking forward to getting into that. And then in September, we'll be reading Leave the World Behind by Ruman Allen, which is a sinister tale of a couple who hire a house, something happens in the city and suddenly a couple turn up who say they own the house and need to stay there. Why? This is going to be on Netflix, I think, very soon with Julia Roberts and Denzel Washington. Looking forward to that. And this one is The Lying Life of Adults by Elena Ferrante. Which we'll be reading in October. Some translated fiction, and I'm really glad reading this because I sometimes have struggled with her writing, and I feel like I need a friend to read it with to get me through it. Really? Yeah. What have what you struggled with? I just, it's... Are I you trying to read it in Italian? <laughs> That's what it was. That's what it was. for the translation, you silly sod. I'm on teasing. Go on. No, no, no. I think it's that I love her writing, 
but um, I, I need it's slow burn. Right. And I think sometimes I need people to. Yeah. Is it, well, I'll be with you. I will be with you. Can you just give us a little upshot of what it's about? I don't know. Oh, you don't know. Okay, fine. Um, Neither I do I. <laughs> and I have the glasses on. They're down on the floor. We did when we picked them. We did read through the synopsis. And yeah, we did. Oh, yeah, we did. Remember that? Looks like a nice cover. Oh, we'll Let's that one. That one. But, um, it was ages ago since we decided. A lovely. If you look at them together. Oh, they're really cool. They, they I don't know where that noise came from. Oh, oh they're, really they're aesthetically pleasing as a, as a group. So there we go. Those are the books. And uh, thanks, Melanie, as Thank always. you, and thank you for watching. And we will see you next month. Yay. Possibly in a northern bookshop. Lovely. Imagine. Ooh.